says now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. Let's all pray. Lord we thank you God once again this afternoon for your grace and your mercy your love. We are here O oh Lord standing. We are here Lord having the privilege and opportunity to hear your words because you want to clean us O oh God through your words which you have spoken to each one of us. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that we will not only be hearers of the words, but doers of the words. Because we cannot do anything without you, O oh God. So help us, O oh Lord, to hear, digest, and really be attentive and focused to your words today. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time, give a praise. Hallelujah. Everybody may be seated. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, praise the Lord. I just want to thank the Lord for... He just revealed something amazing, you know, like the God we serve, the God who created the universe. Amen. The God who has... Are you listening? Are you, are you with me this afternoon? Uh, I just want to thank God because He takes time. Amen. He takes time with us to reveal Himself. He takes time to be with us. I don't know if you appreciate it as much as God has revealed it to each one of us. But can you imagine the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is spending time with us here in Merosar. Here in Icarus. Amen. Just imagine that. Praise God. Hallelujah. While many of our politicians in the Philippines right now are very busy campaigning Amen. for themselves. Amen. Amen. Campaigning to what they can do for the betterment of the community. 
But here we have a God, amen, that never fails. Amen. That his promises are true. And we have seen what he has done for us last week. Amen. And I told you last week the videos that we have seen or we saw was very mild. But in fact, it was already very brutal. But in reality, it was very mild. And I did that, I believe, because God wants us to understand that when we talk about His sacrifice, it was not something that it was ordinary. Amen. It was something special. That entire His blood was drained for each one of us. That's, that's how much He loves us. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and we described the pain and the agony and the anguish that he has to go through when he was nailed on the cross. Amen. So that's why I hope and pray that every time we talk about the blood, and if we talk about the cross or we sing about the cross, we can always remember his sacrifice and his love for us. Amen. That it will give us, that will come out of something from us, a praise and worship from the bottom of our spirit, and we say thank you, Jesus, for that sacrifice. Amen. Praise God. And the cross has been a symbol of brutality. But now it has the symbol of salvation. Amen. Can we just thank the Lord for the cross? And what God has reminded me says, at least you have told my people. Because right now, what they know, they will be accountable for. Amen. Amen. The more you have knowledge about Him, the more we are accountable. Amen. Meaning to say, we will have to answer to God. God will tell us at the day of judgment, you know what I've done for you. Amen. Amen. You know what I did for you and how come you still do this and do that. Amen. Last week, God reminded us that no matter how many times we give Him reason not to love us. Amen. A million reasons, a thousand reasons, a hundred reasons not to love us anymore. But I thank God, none of that changes His mind. Say, I love you. Until, until you draw your last breath and that will be it. What verse is that? That after death is judgment? Hebrews 9.27 This is where His love the God of grace and the God of mercy and the God of love will stop until we draw our last so from the time we are born, we were born, until the time of our death, grace and mercy and love is always available. Amen. Hallelujah. But it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this is judgment. So his perfect love now is matched with his perfect justice. Everybody say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. So always remember that. So now we know His love. And that's why I believe God revealing Himself to us as a church here in Palau is very important. I don't need to raise my voice. I don't need to shout now. Because I know you know the truth. He loves you and me. And He deserves all the praise. He deserves all the attention, all the focus, all the time, all the praise and glory. Amen. Amen. If you sleep this afternoon, it's up to you. But the God that we serve has been revealing. This past few Sundays, we have been talking about the prayer. What prayer? Tabernacle prayer. Only a few, maybe, are present every Sunday. We have just been talking about the tabernacle prayer. The first part of the tabernacle was what? The gate of Thanksgiving. 
And for the past two weeks, we have been talking about the brazen altar or the altar of sacrifice. So God has, we have to understand that God, the creator of the universe, took time, listen, took time to tell Moses how to approach his presence. He took time, he says, I know your heart, I know your mind, I know your desire, you want to be with me, yes. But I want you to understand that there are steps to approach me. Amen. And you have to learn this. Amen. Amen. The first thing we've learned is we have to come, before we can go to His presence, we have to bring, amen, thanksgiving and praise and worship unto Him. We come here with dancing, we come here with clapping, we come here with gratefulness in our hearts. We come here with, amen, praise God, amen. and being thankful. And I thank you, I really love what you said this afternoon when you said that tithing and offering should be a day of celebration. It should be a celebration. I've never heard that before. So every time they come to the altar, every, they come to the tabernacle, it was a celebration. Praise God, we're going to go to His presence. Our sins are going to be atoned. So I come here with thanksgiving. I come here with my voice. I come here with my hands. You know, we know we have a Bible study in Narilong. His name is Brother Jeff. Maybe you will see him next week. He said he's going to come. I don't know. His hands are... I think he had an accident. He had an accident. And he couldn't move his hands. Like, it's like this. So everything he does, his hands or fingers, not hands, fingers are like this. But when we talk about the Lord and we talk about this morning, about understanding, he could not contain himself but clap his hands, although his fingers are not right. But he is able to clap his hands. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. If you have got my hands this afternoon, amen. We have to answer to God why Brother Jeff in very long can clap his hands. And so we have to come here with thanksgiving. And our, our prayer should always begin with thanksgiving. There's a lot, there's so much things to be thankful for. Despite all the problems, despite all the sickness, all I've read in the messenger right now, in the, in the prayer, prayer team, is all about sickness right now. So many sickness going on in Palau, in the Philippines. Our families are being attacked with with flu, with the various diseases. Amen. Amen. But despite of that, I still have to come. Amen. If I want to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, I still need to come into the gates of thanksgiving. Remember, this is God's plan. This is not your pastor's plan. This is God's plan. When we come here, we should be bringing Thanksgiving and praise and worship. The next is when we brought our sacrificial sacrificial lamb or our cows or our turtle dove. It depends on your uh, social status or your financial status in the society. God is not forcing you to buy a cow even if though you cannot afford. Get that? God did not ask you, if you cannot afford a cow, don't buy a cow. Get a turtle dove. But some of us, even though we cannot afford a lechon babo, we still have a lechon babo in our birthday. Praise God. Mahimik ata. Walang madala sa Pilipinas, halang. Dala talaga ng mga tsokolate. Mas pura sa Pilipinas, don't you talang pumili? So here's the thing. Thanksgiving and now what we talked about was um, the brazen altar, the altar of sacrifice. This is where blood is being shed. Amen. Atonement. I'm just reviewing. Is it okay? Amen. This is a place when we are, this is a prayer pattern. When we pray, this is the biggest furniture that has dimensions 
in the tabernacle. And we can spend as much time as we can here because we have so many things to repent about. Amen. But His blood, amen, we can apply the blood of Jesus Christ. And He says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful amen. and just that He will forgive our sins. Amen. Praise God. And one thing I've, I've learned also about healing, in, J, in James 5, 14 and 15, we always read this, Is anyone sick among you? Let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And this is what amazes me. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So meaning to say healing... And forgiveness goes hand in hand. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Because we forget. Sometimes we just ask for healing. We forget to repent. We have to ask for repentance. We have to repent to God. Whatever it is that we fail. Amen. In our daily lives. And then the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And I thank God that God has healed us. Amen. I know many of us were saved last week, two weeks ago. That God has healed us. Hallelujah. I thank God that my condition also didn't get worse. I thank God for the healing. Amen. Amen. And so that's very important. Right now, let's go to the... After we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice... You have, we have to understand that when the priests gets the animals, cut them, the blood, the offering, what will happen? And they wear a white robe. What do you think will happen to the their dress or their uniform or their robe? Blood stain, right? It will be stained with blood. This afternoon, I will remind you again why we are doing this. Because prayer brings us or develops within us divine inner strength. Without the presence of God residing in our lives, we will respond to external pressures. Amen. Amen. Carnally, not spiritually. So that's why he wants us prayerfully strong. And I will say this and I will say it again. If we have the presence of God inside by praying, amen, I believe we can conquer everything and all things. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you than me that is in the world. And I found out, and I am very guilty of this, that sometimes our mood swings is very bad for our hearts. Amen. Amen. I am guilty about this because I can be happy now, and a few seconds later, my, my mood can swing to very angry. And it's not good for our hearts. And God is telling me that we should not be basing on our emotions, amen. But we should be basing on His goodness and His love, and amen. Hallelujah. Let me just give a praise. So, what we are faced right now in going through the tabernacle is that we are now so dirty with the blood of the animals, amen. And we have to understand, amen, that the blood will atone for our sins. Meaning to say, it will cover our sins. Praise the Lord. Amen. But here's the thing. We cannot go to the presence of God or even the holy place without washing. Amen. So let me give you a... And here's the amazing thing about the laver of water. Laver, okay, not L-O-V-E-R. Laver, L-A-V-E-R. Malahi pa ang, tapos na pala ang Valentine's. 
One of the amazing thing about this is God did not give any specific dimensions. Wow. We don't know how big or small it is. It has no dimensions. But what it is said in the Bible is it's made of bronze or brass. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, okay. The scholars believe that it could possibly have been large enough for the priest to sit or lie down to wash themselves of residue of the sacrifice. Wow. Like a bathtub. Amen. And here's the one thing I find it amazing that water is also sometimes a mirror. Amen. Before when they had no mirror, I believe they used water. Amen. Right? Amen. 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 Because I believe, and this is what the our lesson said from heaven to earth is that. The laver of water was a place where not only washed their hands and feet, but it also caught a glimpse of their own faces. In this mirrored bowl, they saw both the reflection in the water and in the bowl itself. They could see who they were and who they were becoming. Amen. Because we came into the tabernacle, not yet forgiven. Praise God. Amen. We only bring our sacrifice of praise, our thanksgiving, but not yet forgiven. But the moment we started to sacrifice the blood all over our plate, all over the place. And when you talk about sacrifice, it was painful. Amen. It's not easy. Amen. 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 Coming to church is never easy. It always requires sacrifice. Amen. But going to the cinema is not. not. Going to the beach is not. Going to a party is not a sacrifice. It's pleasurable. Amen. But to the flesh, coming to church is a sacrifice because the flesh does not want to come to church. Amen. 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 If it's true, then it will be filled all the time. Some people prefer cock fighting. Some people prefer going to the beach. Some people prefer basketball, Amen. volleyball, Amen. zumba, humba. Oh, everybody say praise the Lord. Praise it's a sacrifice. So when we come, when we are really praying, and when we come to the laver, then we can see ourselves, who we were, and who we are trying to become. Washing was both literal and spiritual. It is a reminder to all of us that cleansing was required before approaching God. Amen. 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 What God is saying is this. Can we go back, brother? What God is saying is that to offer a thanksgiving it's not enough. Amen. Right? To sacrifice and to make a promise. To ask repentance is not enough. Amen. Why? We need also cleansing. We need to be washed. We need to be clean from our sinfulness. Because we cannot approach a holy God. I want to discuss to you about the garments, but I'm not going to dwell there. But I'm just going to show you a picture. Uh, you have another one, but... Okay, this is called the ephod. E P H O D. Ephod. Ephod. Okay. 
this is the high priest's clothing. Go back to the after he washed from the laver. So the laver is just plain white. So when they come in, it's just all white. Okay? So don't tell me if you wear all white, you're a cult. No. <laughs> it's just a symbol of purity and righteousness in the Word of God. Okay? So if all of us were well white, don't say we're a cult. But I'm not going to ask you to do that. Or else we may look like... <laughs> and I don't like that. It's up to you. It's hard to wear white pants, especially if it's raining. <laughs> it's God. So, white, white gown or white robe. Go to the laver, cleanse himself. Amen. They change to the ephod. Even here, there's already a change. Remember here, it should, it should begin actually here. Romans 12, 1 and 2, please. Remember this place again, the, the brazen altar. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, your bodies in living sacrifice. So that's the brazen altar. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But the next thing is, this is change. But be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's really funny. Not funny. In, in Larry Long, although we are only two or three during the Bible study, but it's, it's, it's amazing how when somebody is really open to the Word of God. Everybody say open. Open. Um, We'll come back to that, brother. Uh, let's go to Psalms 119. Mm. What verse was that? Uh, let me check. Psalms 119. Uh, 143. 130. 130. Listen. This morning we talked about understanding. You know, it, it seems like one-on-one -on -one Bible study was great. The entrance of thy words, remember we're talking about his words, the laver, giveth light. And I think that was the message this morning, light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. And so now, if simple, what, what does this mean, simple? It gives understanding to the simple. Anybody? By your own understanding, what does it mean? In Tagalog, you have your bilingual... Uh, what does it mean there? Simple. In Palawan, I think it speaks properly. And if you have the Palawan Bible, it speaks of what simple means. Because for me, simple, it does not really, you know... I don't really understand it. What is simple in the language? Because we have to understand, we have to understand. Right? Because if you don't understand, all you just look at me. Have you been to a conference or a meeting where you don't, that's why I don't go to Koror Elementary School anymore, I'm sorry. Because they only speak Palawan during meetings. And I say, what's going on? I have no problem with that. That's why I don't go to the meeting. They just give us a uh, uh, printout of what they were meeting. So why would I go if I don't understand? Amen? I, I'm, I'm pro Palawan. No problem. Yes, praise God. Because I believe the new generation were, were losing the Palawan language because the kids no longer speak Palawan. And I'm pro Palawan. No problem. But... I cannot understand it. So I, that's why I don't go to meetings. See here, understanding is very important because the Word of God gives understanding to the simple. Simple what? Simple what? 
Pero ang tanga? Inosente. Inosente. In Palawan. Anybody else in Palawan Bible, please? I think it speaks of that the translation in Palawan is better than in English or in Tagalog. Walang mua. Oh, to cut the long story short, simple means honest. Simple means transparent. Simple means open. Simple means willing to follow instructions. So if we change that, it giveth understanding to the honest. If it giveth understanding to the open people. It giveth understanding to those people who are willing to obey or follow instructions. Have you met a worker when it's their first day or first week and you're trying to teach them how we do things here but they don't, they're not willing to listen? Because they think they know it all? Or have you met co-workers also that they have so much expectation of a co-worker that just arrived and they expect she will do or he will do the things that they have been doing for years? Amen. Amen. Every time we have a new job, we must be willing to be simple. Meaning to say we have to be willing to follow the instructions. The SOPs, Standard Operating Procedure. I know we've worked in another company before, but this is not our company. This is a new, we must be simple. And God is saying, if we are not honest within ourselves, if we are not open, then understanding will not come in. It doesn't matter what we do, videos, props, if you don't understand, I've been wondering, Lord, why do we pray for, Lord, give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Why is it that understanding is last when it is the first? I know it is imperative we get wisdom, knowledge, understanding. What's the difference between the three? What's the difference between wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? Okay. I know you know, I'll just say it. Understanding will give us knowledge. Because knowledge is learned. Amen. How can you learn if you don't understand? Amen. <laughs> and that's why in Singapore math, sometimes it's too complicated because they want to understand how they arrive from 5 plus 5 equals 10. Because what I was taught, 5 plus 5 equals 10, don't question it. But in math, in Singaporean math, they have to have 5 plus 5, and they have to show it. And it's confusing at times if you're not used to it. When I see Ziv doing Singaporean math, it's like, wow, it's so complicated. But for them, what they, 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 they explain to me is that they have to understand why they arrived to such number. Do you, do you do Singaporean math in your elementary before? No? So you know what I mean. Sometimes it can be very confusing when you divide the tens and the ones and the twenties and the hundreds and the thousands, right? It's like, oh, hallelujah. I thank God that when, when my mom said five plus five is ten, don't question it. Just that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so when we understand it, then we try we get the concept and we get the knowledge. Yeah? Wisdom is applied knowledge. So God right now is giving us, trying us to make us understand. Hey, you have to understand that before you come to my presence, you have to do this. If you don't understand that, you won't do it. That's why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but by the renewing of our... We have to renew our minds. We have to be simple. We have to say, I'm willing, Lord, to listen and learn. And here's the thing. We talked about born again this morning. I, I just want to share to you the, the, the back and forth during the preaching. Since pastor, somebody committed suicide in our in, in our, uh, our relative in, in Kayan. Uh, was the brother of, you know, who. And I said, and they asked me, pastor, 
he was a born, born again Christian. He go to church long time ago and uh, something like that. But he committed suicide. Uh, Pastor, is he in hell or in heaven when he was born again? Wow, is this a trick question <laughs> in my mind? Oh my goodness, like how are you going to answer this? And I said, okay, here's what, what I know. Number one, I cannot say where he is. Only God knows. Amen. What I know is this, that he is in the hands of God. That's true. He's the judge. We just read it, Hebrews 9, 27. After death is judging. And we are not the judge. The second one is, God has given us clues. No, not clues. Facts. Of who can go to where. In the Bible. And, and I told him, like how we define simple in this verse, we must identify or we should, how do you call this? Not identify. Simple. We define simple, right? We define it as honest, as uh, willing to obey instruction. We must also, uh, what did I say? Define born again. What is a born again? And I asked, and I told him, and I told them, do you know that when we go to heaven, there's only one question? And I said, what is it, Pastor? I said, that's for next week. <laughs> he said, can't we do it now? I said, no, we have no time. We're already one hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> and we just talked about, and see, and I love the conversation. It was very intimate. You know why? They were open. They were honest. Hallelujah. They are willing to receive instruction. So they get to understand. And we always must have that kind of spirit or else everything will be very confusing because we don't understand. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm almost, I'm not just going to say almost means, yeah, never mind. Almost means almost. I know it doesn't matter. The purpose of the laver of water was obviously to provide a place of washing for the priests who has been handling the sacrifices of the people. They could not bring their own sin nor the residuals of the sin of the people into the holy place. Therefore, washing with water was needed. Everybody say praise the Lord. So, in our prayer when we arrive to the laver, this is the place in our prayer when we take time to read the word of God and allow it to wash us clean. Amen. Amen. It is this time of deliberate meditation on the word of God. This is intentional washing and sanctification. Amen. Have you taken a bath for the sake of an intentional cleansing part of your body? I know, I know. Do you know what I mean? I need to take a bath because my head is very itchy. So the purpose of us taking a bath because it's itchy. Amen. So meaning to say intentional, deliberate cleansing. You don't care about the other parts. You just care about the head. Or there are times I'm going to take a shower because my armpit smells like vinegar. <laughs> or my foot smells like Amen. Amen. I even ask people, are you going to take a bath again? You just took a bath. No. I'm going to take a bath because it's very humid. Okay. Intentional. Not necessarily for cleaning, but just to be fresh. Amen. Praise God. Do you take a bath? Amen. Do you take a shower? Really? But how come it seems I'm talking about shower you don't know about it? 
Are you preparing for the drought? Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's very important that when we come to the laver, it should be intentional. Cleansing. For example, you have Google, right? Amen. You have Wi-Fi, right? Amen. You have data, right? Amen. If you don't have one, that's your problem, actually. It's available. If you have a problem with your tongue, <laughs> if you're going to keep your mouth shut, amen. amen, if you curse all the time, speak all the time, even if it requires to keep quiet, then you have to pray about your tongue deliberately, specifically Amen. during the word. So you search about tongue in the word of God. Then you pray about Lord, cleanse my tongue. <laughs> or like me, my temper, Lord, cleanse my temper, oh God. Help me to become, I know there's more problems because I'm praying for patience. Ooh. But help me overcome my temper, O oh God. Amen. So it's deliberate. Help me, O oh God, of my laziness to read your words and pray. I can sleep all day. Watch all day, but can't pray one hour a day. Help me with that, God. You know, Pastor Mangan said, this is what they believe in the church. That they said, he said, that you have no business in heaven if you cannot even pray for an hour a day. It's, it's them. It says, it's not even it. Because if 10% is of the Lord, how many hours do we have in a day? What's 10% of that? Two hours and 40 minutes. Right? If 10% is God, and they just say one hour a day. If we cannot spend prayer for one hour a day, then guaranteed you're not going to heaven. What I said is maybe many of us will not be able to enter. <laughs> really? One hour? You cannot pray? Uh, with our fasting and prayer, we have one hour and 30 minutes. One hour and 30, some of us 30 minutes, some of us 15. So, just divide it. If it's one hour, is very hard. In the morning, let's say 10 minutes. That's too short, 15. Can you do 10 minutes? That's too short. Really? 15, 15 minutes in the morning? Hindi pa rin kaya? Problema niyo na yan. 15 minutes, then before lunch, 15, lunch, 15, how much is that? That's already 45? Then night time, 15, that's one hour. Can we do that? Can we do that? 15 minutes? To spend time to thank God. Hallelujah. Wow. If that's true, and this is what I've been reading, and this is what I've been hearing from them, if you cannot pray one hour a day, you have no business in heaven. And I think it's true because God is saying it right now. Amen. <laughs> you want to come here? You don't even spend time with me. okay. That's why with the tabernacle it is impossible. I'm telling you, it is very hard to pray for 15 minutes with this prayer. I'm not kidding. It's very, I tried it. I tried the shortest one I prayed was during the music. When we had our first fellowship, I prayed tabernacle prayer like 3 minutes. It's very hard. It's like rushing everything. Because here alone, here, here, 
this one, and all inside, you will understand why it's very hard. But when we get to learn tabernacle prayer, one hour is very short. When we do the prayer while you're here every Saturday, if you want to join us, you can try and join us. If, if you want to see how tabernacle prayer is done, be with us. Amen. Saturday, 7 to 8. Normally we start, exact, not normally, exactly we start 7. Sometimes we finish 8.15 and sometimes it's already rushed. Amen. Amen. Because why? Because when you go through the tabernacle, you want to stay in one place because it means so much to you. Amen. Praise God. Can we just give God the glory? He's teaching us a way to approach it. Amen. And it's amazing when we get to learn this the next few months, when we go especially inside the holy place, how amazing it is. And it is indeed life-changing. And so the laver is a place where our prayer, when we take time to read the word of God and allow it to wash us, it is intentional washing, intentional cleansing. This washing and cleansing also is a preparation for prayer, not only for ourselves, but for others. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise That's why in John 15, 3, the Bible says, Now you are clean through the word, what does it say? Which I have spoken unto you. I envy people. Everybody say envy. envy. When I see them doing Zumba. Zumba. Right? When they have they're perspiring. I envy them because we need some of that. And I envy people when they run. Jogging? Because I need that. Amen. I need to take care of this temple as well. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise I need to. Especially now for almost two weeks now. Um, I feel like I'm very weak. Then I need to exercise next week. God willing. Because I've just been resting. Amen. You see. We all need to practice daily personal hygiene. Huh? Do you practice daily personal hygiene? What does it mean, Pastor? Do you take a bath? Amen. Do you brush your teeth? Do you comb your hair? Do you cut your nails? Do you clean your ears? <laughs> Amen, right? We need to have daily personal hygiene. So the laver is also cleansing. It's also our spiritual, personal hygiene. Cleansing comes from the Word of God. Read and spoken aloud and claim the promises of God. Amen. Praise God. If you have bad news that you have received, go to the Word of God. We have a sister. I'm just sharing this. Very important. That she is depressed. She is discouraged. Amen. And that is normal when you hear the doctor is saying that you have no chance. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. And you feel depressed. And I feel that. I've seen that. But we can always go to the word of God and claim his promises and declare in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, we are healed. By your stripes, we are healed in the name of Jesus. I have to go back to the word of God to cleanse me from this dirt of unbelief. This dirt of doom and gloom and death. No more chance. Why? I don't believe you. Why? Because I've read somewhere in the Bible. He can wash me. He can clean me through his words. He can heal me. I just have to be bold. 
I just have to declare. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We need to this. Because the world is spreading out fear. The big one. If you're not a Filipino, you don't understand that. The big one is the one that they have been preparing for the biggest earthquake. They, they always say the big one, the big one, but they, nobody prepares. It happened during the Holy Week. Amen. During the Holy Week, they did not pray, they party. They went vacation, they didn't go to church. But when the earthquake came by Monday, that was Monday, right? 22. Everybody start praying. I hope and pray we don't start praying when the earthquake comes. I hope and pray we pray every day, we pray every hour, we pray every second, every minute of our lives. Don't wait for something to happen to pray. Maybe it's already too late. I was even joking. Maybe Palam is an earthquake. I'm not praying for that, believe me. I cannot, we cannot even pray, Lord, stop the earthquake. No, if He wills it, it will happen. Amen. Amen. I'm not praying for that. I'm praying that there will be no earthquake. But what I'm praying is this. Lord, help us to have a spiritual awakening. Help us, Lord, to know you, God, to love you more than anything else, more than any beach, more than any party. More than any sports, more than any activity. Help us, O oh Lord, to, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God first. Amen. Now everybody say praise the Lord. That's why we need the word of God. Amen. By the washing of ourselves in the word of God, we are able to strip off our sinful nature and take the nature of our Lord, Jesus Christ. <laughs> First Peter two one five. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. When we wash, Amen. For example, you are, we are angry, we are depressed, we are disturbed. All of that is in us. Then we started to praise God despite everything. Then we repent of our sins, but still we feel. The depression, the anger. Are you still with me? Amen. Amen. Many of us, even me, sometimes I come here to church angry, confused. Amen. No desire. But I still bring praise and worship because in everything, give Him thanks, right? Amen. But I still feel, I'm still down, I'm still mad, I'm still all this. But what we... Come to deliver when we cleanse ourselves. This is what will happen. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings. Amen. Can you go back, brother? And all evil posts. Don't fall into the trap of Facebook. What's in your mind? <laughs> Is it a cleansed mind or a dirty mind? Because whatever comes out of that mind will reflect on what you write. Don't fall for the trap. What's on your mind? That's what it says, right? In baseball. What's on your mind? Lay aside all malice and all God. Now let me tell you, if you, don't, if you want to fight battles, don't fight battles in Facebook. Fight battles in our prayer. Amen. Fight battles in our prayer closet. Hallelujah. I think we need to see the war room again. Amen. If you know what I'm talking about, if you want to know, watch the movie War Room. All God and hypocrisies and enemies are all speaking. What two, please? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Amen. I know sometimes teaching can be boring, 
but we are all having jobs now because of boring teaching. I'm not saying boring teachers, but we just find teaching boring. But it is essential for us to learn. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So desire that. It's not every Sunday preaching, but teaching like this. Sincere milk of the word, and you may grow there by three. <clears throat> if so, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Is the Lord gracious? Yeah. Have you tasted His goodness and mercy? Oh, hallelujah! Every day, four. To whom coming as unto a living stone, this allowed in need of man, but chosen of God and precious, five. You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up so spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So all of us are priests. This is what he said, right? All of us now are priests. So we can, before only the priest and the high priest can go inside, but now all of us are priests. We are called priests. Amen. But Jesus Christ is the high priest. Everybody say praise the Lord. And that's why in the New Testament, there is no more priesthood. There's only the fivefold ministries. What is that? Pastor, prophet, evangelist, teachers, and what's the other one? Five one. Pastors, evangelists, prophets, teachers, and apostles. No priests. Why? Because all of us are priests. What is the laver made of? Bronze. Bronze is a symbolic substance of God and it is it symbolizes the judgment of God. Bronze is judgment. So, the laver is examining ourselves and to check the reflection in the Word. And the Word will bring us total cleansing. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And here's the reason, probably the reason why there is no specific dimensions given to the laver. Because what it says is that regardless of the depth of stains of our sin, He can wash it all away. Hallelujah. Nothing in our past is so vile that it cannot be erased by His blood. There is nothing in our present that He cannot wash away. God can cleanse it. God can wash it away. Psalms 103 verse 12. So don't tell me that because you are an addict, adulterer, fornicator, that God cannot use you. No. But if you allow God to cleanse you, He can use you. Psalms 103 verse 12. He says, As far as the east is from the west, so far as He removed our transgressions from us, can we give Him praise that He never, He forgets our sins. Isaiah 43, 25. Do you know that God can have a godly amnesia? You know what amnesia is? What's amnesia? Huh? You forget certain, you, you forget pasts. Your past, sometimes it depends on the, uh, the, the severity of the amnesia. Sometimes you cannot even remember your name. Amen. God has sometimes a godly amnesia. Really, Pastor? Yes. Deliberate amnesia. <laughs> pastor, maybe you're a joke, joke Pastor. You know me, I'm not really good in making jokes. And this is what God said. If you repent, and if we wash, He says, I, even I, He, I'm He, that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember 
thy sins. There is nothing as powerful against his own blood. No matter how many, oh, I thank God. No amount of sin is more powerful. His name is higher. His name is higher than any sin. He can forgive. And not only that, he forgets about. Amen. Are you thankful that God forgets? Oh, it's only us sometimes we remember. We cannot be successful, my brothers and sisters, or effective prayer life without the Word of God. Amen. Remember, the priest could move any closer to the presence of the Lord. They have to take time to wash in the lather. Everybody say praise the Lord. Let me go back. So, I'm already done. Pastor, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know any words of God. Then it's high time to know them now. Amen. Amen. You don't have a Bible, get one, buy one. If you have a smartphone, it's for free. It's even free. Amen. Still don't get it? Really? Uh, because the washing part is not done hurriedly. Hindi nagmamadali. Amen. That's why sometimes in the house, I always tell them, I know you take a shower for 45 minutes, so you go ahead now. <laughs> Don't rush. Take your time. It's important. That's personal hygiene. Amen. Don't rush. No problem. You know where we got that? I believe we got that here. <coughs> Maybe some of us only wash our face, wet, wet our hair, and go out. <laughs> you look fresh. <laughs> Who has tried that? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> All of us. Especially in high school before. Only wash the face, wet the hair. Ooh. Ask if took a shower. <laughs> Just don't come any closer. Paano ba yung schedule? Sabay-sabay kayo maligo. Take your time here. So when you go shower, take your time. Pastor, I don't know any words of God. No, like I said, now's the time. So when you come to the altar, when we get to learn the words of God, when we get to pray the tabernacle, when we finish this, maybe two months from now or a month from now, I hope we, I hope we'll finish it by May. April? Is it April? Huh? Yeah. Then I hope and pray we finish it by May. So by June we start praying the tabernacle prayer, personally and as a congregation. Are you excited for that? Amen. Life changing. So here, the lever, take your time. If you have any weakness, bring your Bible, read it. Search for it, intentional washing. And I truly believe, I truly believe, if we do this with an open, being simple, being honest, being willing to obey, I believe God will really speak. Because the God that we serve is not a hiding God. He is a revealing God. He always reveals himself. It takes time. It takes the effort. Amen. says, if you really want to know me, here it is right now. You got it right right now. Before you come inside the church, you don't even know how to clap your hands. You, you, you bring a frowning face. You don't even smile. Uh, but now, at least, when you come, you have a smile. Amen. Amen. <laughs> At least now we can clap our hands, we can dance, we can clap with our fingers. Can we clap our hands to the Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah! Before it was so hard. It was so hard. And, but now it's okay, you got it now. Now, now, when you go to the altar, praise God. God is teaching us to repent of our sins, to struggle with the, the temptations that we have. Lord, I really want to change. There's another level. If you really want to change, then 
allow my words to cancel. No wonder why sometimes the Word of God hurts. Amen. Amen. Word of God hurts. Because what I know is that cleansing agents are painful. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Do you know agua oxinada? Amen. Can I get a knife and cut your hand and put agua oxinada? And you will feel the even alcohol. I believe any cleansing agent is painful. Amen. And now I just understood now that sometimes the word of God hurts. Sometimes it just talks about us and about our mind, about our tongue, about my temper. It hurts us because God wants us to be clean. And ha do you know that if you have a stain or a mud that you want to take out, it's very hard. What do you do? Right? Sometimes it, you get a wound by cleaning. Amen. Amen. Do you? Amen. <laughs> I hope you understand what I mean that when there's something Amen. that you want taken out <laughs> at least right now there's a DIY. DIY you can search for how can I take out an ink uh, what, what kind of stains right you know what I mean no? Amen. It's painful. When it's cleansing, when it's cleaning, it's painful. If our clothes have stains, it's painful. Can you imagine being in the washing machine for almost one hour? And drying for another 45 minutes? If only our clothes can speak. And sometimes if, if it still smells bad, and it's not that good, you pull it back again. Oh. Can you imagine if that's us and the Word of God is the washing machine? Isn't that painful? Isn't that confusing sometimes? It's worse in the Philippines if you go to the river. <laughs> Have you done old school washing by the steam now? You've done with the paddle? That's in the Philippines. <laughs> Have you done that? We do it like that. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe to scare off the mud. You've never tried that. Have you seen that, Brother John? In the river? Can you imagine if that's us? Praise God. But I thank God that there is a blessing in washing, sanctifying process. It may hurt, but it will benefit us. Praise the Lord. Ang pinakahirap na stain, and this is the truth, underarm stain. <laughs> white t-shirts, for those who like to wear whites, undershirts, that's the hardest part. And that's why if it cannot be removed, we make it a rug. <laughs> so don't let the sin stain us so badly that we end up being thrown. Oh, how I wish I could. How I wish I get a witness of God's mercy and grace. We need the lover. Right now, before, I've said this in the prayer warrior that we need to spend time here, right? I think it's going to be longer now because we need to spend time more here. Wow, I'm just excited. The Word of God is powerful. Amen. The Word of God is special. The Word of God is water. Something to drink, something to hydrate us. Some of the sickness, many sickness now is because of the heat. Amen. Hydrate all the time. Amen. As a Christian, the heat of persecution and problems is very hot now. Amen. Don't forget to drink. Amen. Drink the words of God. It will help us. Let's all stand. And... <coughs>